Okay, so if you had something that looked kind of like this, and where you have these uh, square, you have four triangles kind of around a square base attached to another four triangles. And if you think of this as one entire figure instead of, it's not just a square pyramid on top of another square pyramid, but if you think of this whole thing, okay, this fits the conditions of a polyhedra. All the faces are triangles. Okay. However, it's not a prism, it's not a pyramid because when you look at these, are there any opposite sides that are parallel and congruent to each other? No, there's the opposite sides are, uh, and when you look at this, you could think of it as two pyramids on top of, or placed together, but as a whole, this is not considered a uh, prism or a pyramid. And so it is possible to have solids that are not either of those, even if they're only formed with polygons. Okay, are there any questions on prisms or pyramids? Okay, so the last things that I want to talk about in this section are the types of solids that are neither prisms nor pyramids, okay. and the ones that I'll focus on are solids of rotation. They're also called solids of revolution. Okay. And the, the main three that I want to discuss are cylinders, cones, and spheres. So what it means to be a solid rotation is if you take a rectangle and you rotate this rectangle about one of its sides. So if we set an axis of rotation, along one edge of a rectangle, and then we revolved or sp we spun this rectangle around in three dimensions. And what it's going to form as it gets spun around is a cylinder. Okay, so a cylinder is a solid of rotation or solid of revolution formed by rotating a rectangle along one of its sides. Okay. When you're thinking of the definitions for these. A cylinder is pretty much a solid with two parallel and congruent bases. Those bases will be circles and they're connected by what I usually refer to as a curved rectangle. And so if you look at a cylinder, your parallel and congruent bases are circles, and they're connected by a curved surface, but that curved surface, if you cut it and unroll it or flatten it out, is a rectangle. Okay? But you can also think of it as the solid form by rotating a rectangle about one of its sides or edges. And when you're dealing with a cylinder, The height of the cylinder, capital H, the height of that solid, is the perpendicular distance between the two bases. And so a cylinder is a lot like a prism. And they both have two parallel and congruent bases. The height is the perpendicular between those bases. The only difference is the cylinder has the curved surface. Prisms do not. With respect to a cylinder, the other measurement beside capital H that will play a role in this has to do with the radius of its circular base. So again, just be aware of that. Right, if you take a right triangle, right, it has to be a right triangle. But if you take a right triangle and you rotate it along an axis of, of rotation, what you'll form 
again, as you rotate this about, you wind up forming this cone. And so a cone is a solid that's formed by rotating a right triangle about one of its legs. And again, in a right triangle, the two sides that form the right angle are called legs. The side that's opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So if you rotate a right triangle along one of its legs, you form a cone. So how many bases does a cone have? Just one. And it's also a circle. So you have one circular base that's connected to a common point. And so a cone will also have a vertex. The height of a cone is that perpendicular from the center or from the vertex to the base. And once again, that circular base has a dimension radius that plays a role in other measurements involving the cone. Okay, so cylinders are uh, rectangles rotated. A cone is a right triangle rotated. A sphere is what shape rotated? Semicircle. So if you take a semicircle and you rotate it about an axis of rotation, you form your sphere. And we've already defined sphere right, because it's often confused with the definition of circle, but a sphere is the set of all points. that are a given distance from a fixed point. Okay, the given distance, once again, is called the radius. And the fixed point, once again, is called the center. Okay, so here's your center point. It extends out to all points on the sphere are the same distance away from that center. Right, but again, you can think of it as a semicircle rotated about its diameter or the set of all points a given distance from the fixed point. And when you're talking about any solid, which includes both the polyhedra and the solids of rotation, um, solids are going to enclose the space And the space that's enclosed by a solid is called the volume. And we'll deal more with that in chapter eight. Right, but it's just kind of that the accumulated space that's contained within a solid is the volume.